Morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business or health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, likewise, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You could purchase your longevity products off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself. You can help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you've benefited in your life from nutritional supplementation, you can pay it forward, help other folks. Most people don't understand how powerful nutrition can be. Most people don't understand how powerful lifestyle choices can be when it comes to health and wellness and and, and the development of diseases, illnesses. We're not told that, certainly. Now, if you're listening to this program, don't take for granted that you and your, your friends probably, you wouldn't be listening to this program if you didn't have some basic idea about, or at least belief, that nutrition could be involved in good health. Most people have zero concept. 99% of people out there have no idea that they don't have to have high blood pressure. They don't have to have psoriasis. They don't have to have heart disease. They don't have to have diabetes. There are strategies that you can use, and there are strategies that you can teach other people to use to help reverse any chronic degenerative illness, chief among which, of course, is to get on a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Doc and all the folks at Longevity. Call 866-735-2470 if you're interested in joining the Brightside Ben team or in purchasing Longevity products or sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side. We're talking skin health and skin appearance, particularly when it comes to anti-aging, anti-aging skin health. Everybody's obsessed with less wrinkles. I was at a trade show this weekend, a a beauty trade show. 75,000 people were at this trade show. And the trade show was all about skincare and skincare products and esthetician products and salon products and lasers and lights and devices and... Uh, peels and ingredients and products. We are obsessed with anti-aging in the skin in this country, around the world, because everybody sees our skin. Nobody sees our gallbladder. Nobody sees our heart, but they see our skin. And it's not really that difficult when it comes to anti-aging the skin, because we have access in a way, in the skin we have access in a way that we don't have access to any other tissue in the body. We can access the skin topically. We can access the skin on the outside, from the outside. Not only can you see the skin from the outside, you can also access it from the outside. Nonetheless, the same kind of mechanisms that you need to employ 
to anti-age your body, you need to employ, employ to anti-age your skin. It really is just common sense when you think about it. Growing skin is like growing muscle or bone or any other tissue. Except with the skin, we can do it from the outside in as well as from the inside out. And that gives us an added bonus. That gives us a second mechanism that we don't have with other tissues in the body because they're located internally. As with aging in the body, what we're really talking about when it comes to anti-aging the skin, I should say when it comes to anti-aging the body, uh, or when it comes to aging in the body, the same mechanisms are in place when it comes to aging in the skin. We're dealing with a slowdown. A slowdown of anabolism. Anabolism means building up. Anabolism and catabolism are the two main processes in the body. Anabolism means building. Catabolism means breaking down. And anabolism plus catabolism equals metabolism. Your metabolism is the sum total of the building up and the breaking down. It's the sum total of all the chemistry that happens in your body. The chemistry in your body is either building you up or breaking you down. And it's always going on. Build up and break down are always going on. Even when you're a baby, you're breaking down when you're a baby. It's just that you're building up way more than you're breaking down. You're net in the black, I like to say. As we age, we become, we become more and more. We become less in the black, and gradually, we become more and more into the red. As we age, that's what aging is. We're in the red. We're breaking down faster than we're building up. The catabolic or catabolism processes are, are, are superseding, are transcending, are happening faster than the anabolism, than the building up. That's aging in a nutshell. You're breaking down faster than you're building up. Well, guess what? You can reverse that process or at least begin to reverse that process. That's called anti-aging. That's what anti-aging is about. Anti-aging is reversing that catabolism override or that, that net catabolic state to net anabolism. Some people don't like the term anti-aging. I've heard uh, that's kind of like a, you know, you hear anti-aging all the time. Now there's a pendulum effect. People are resi resisting that term, anti-aging. Well, still, anti-aging, whether you resist it or not, is a real phenomenon because what it means is, is you're reversing catabolism into anabolism. And there's simple ways to do it, and we all know what they are. Because we all know that we are supposed to go to the gym. And basically, that's what going to the gym is about. That's not just going to the gym, though. you got to have a combination. you got to have a combination of stimulation, going to the gym, and nourishment. Actually, you've got to have three things. It's not just stimulation. It's stimulation and rest and nourishment. I call it exorrest. You don't want to overstimulate. I get this question all the time when it comes to the skin. How much is overstimulating? You'll know when you overstimulate a tissue. It doesn't feel good. It'll be sore or it'll be, if you overstimulate it too much, it'll be painful. Same thing on the skin. So you got to combine your stimulation with rest. That's why when you go to the gym, you only work out, you work out your upper body on Monday and you work out your lower body on Tuesday. That's why you want to take days off from the gym. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they start a workout program is they overtrain. So extra rest and nourishment help you reverse the aging process, reverse the net catabolic state, the net breakdown state into net anabolism, take you from being in the red to in the black. Look at a baby. Look at a five-year-old. Or if you have a kid, or if you had a kid when, you're, when he was four, five, six years old, you look at him and he's just, just this amazing, the skin is thick and vital and the kid's running around, got all kinds of energy. And all of these are the manifestation of a net anabolic state. That's what's possible. The net anabolic state is possible, but it takes extra rest and it takes nourishment. And by the way, the more aged we are, the more frail we are, the more important it is to extra rest and nourish internally as well as topically. And oh, also, by the way, if you're breaking down internally, you're going to break down externally. If you're breaking down externally, you're probably breaking down internally. If you got your skin is a window to what's happening in your body, when your body is net catabolic, it's net catabolic as a system. The whole thing is net catabolic. So if you're net catabolic, you're net breaking down, you're aging on your skin, guess what? It's happening in your blood vessels too. It's happening in your bones also. It's happening inside as well as it's happening outside. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. I am, I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we'll be back right after this. Okay, 
We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 at Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We have lines open for you at 844-236-6010, and we'll get your calls here at the bottom of the hour, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, the longevity products or your longevity business, success stories you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. So exercise, nourishment, extra rest and nourishment are the quintessence, the essence of anti-aging. That's what anti-aging is all about, reversing the, the net catabolic state to a net anabolic state. From from a, from a metabolic standpoint, that's anti-aging. Metabolism is the sum total of how much you're breaking down plus how much you're building up. It's your bottom line. You want your bottom line in the black as long as possible. Eventually, it's going to go in the red, but you want to keep it in the black as long as possible, and we can keep it in the black much longer than we're keeping it in the black. And the body's very, very forgiving, incredibly forgiving, too forgiving. It allows us, the body is so forgiving, it allows us to really think that we can get away with uh, all kinds of stuff because the body is so forgiving and we don't notice things until it's too late. So exercising the skin is, requires the same kind of chemistry or involves the same kind of chemistry as exercising the body. Exercising is about stimulation, turning anabolism on. And when I talk about exercising the skin, I'm talking about stimulating it. I'm talking about turning its building up processes on. It's building up chemistry on, activating its building anabolic anti-aging chemistry. Correct stimulation of the skin in bursts. That's how you always want to exercise, in bursts. Long-term endurance running is not necessarily great exercise. Marathoning is not necessarily great exercise. Bursts. The body likes bursts of exercise. It likes bursts of stress. Why bursts? Because after a burst, you get a long period of rest. That's the ideal way to stimulate anything, whether you're talking about a plant or whether you're talking about your brain or whether you're talking about your body or whether you're talking about your skin. Bursts followed by rest. Correct stimulation of the skin in bursts builds up the skin the way correct stimulation of the muscles builds up the muscles. What does that mean for the skin? It means less fine lines. It means less wrinkles. It means more robust, beefier skin. It means a thicker, more resilient barrier, stratum corneum barrier. It means more skin cells. It means more of everything. It means healthier skin. It means more youthful skin. If we understand the concept of exercise and combine it with an understanding of the biological nature of the skin, It'll make perfect sense. We will then literally be able to exercise our skin. Now, we talked about wounding, controlled wounding. Wounding doesn't sound so great, but controlled wounding as a way to speed up turnover time and exercise the skin. That is peeling, exfoliating, removing dead skin cells off the surface. Exfoliate means to remove leaves. And it's exactly the same thing that happens when you remove the leaves off your bush that you have in your, your fern plant or your fern bush, you remove the leaves off of it and it grows back bushier. Likewise with the skin, when you exfoliate the skin, foliage means leaves, when you exfoliate the skin, you get more foliage. You speed up turnover time. When you speed up turnover time, you get more moisture factors, you get moisture skin. Dry skin is not caused by a lack of drinking water, period. That is one of the most tired, old, crazy, silliest myth, myths about dry skin. I don't know anybody who's ever had their dry skin rem, uh, cured by uh, drinking more water. Nobody. Because the water in your skin is not the same as the water you're drinking. The water in your skin is tied up. It's locked up. It's bound water. It's a different kind of water. It's a different H2O molecule. Drinking water is bulk water. It's not the same thing. The water in your skin and the water in your body, for that matter, all the water. You, you ever wonder how they say, oh, you're 60% water, 70% water. That's like the, you know, the standard kind of biological fact. When they talk about the biology of the body, there's all these strange facts in the body. One of the, one of the facts of the body is, oh, your body is 60%, 70% water. Well, how could that be? How could you possibly be a 70% water? You'd be a puddle. 
Why aren't you sloshing around? How could you even walk? Well, the reason is, is because that 70% water is not the same as the water that's in, a, in your sink or in your tap. It's bound water. It's trapped water. It's locked up water. It's electrified water. It's a completely different animal or molecule, if you will. It's a completely different type of water. So dry skin is not caused by a lack of drinking water. With dry skin, and by the way, dry skin is like an epidemic. Human skin should never be dry. And there's not a single human being on the planet, seemingly. There probably is. Kids don't usually have dry skin. And there's probably a few. I don't have dry skin. I've never used a moisturizer or a lotion. Moisturize, there's no such thing as a moisturizer, by the way. That's a whole other story. Um, what we, what we think when we're moisturizing our skin, what we think we're doing is moisturizing. No, you're not moisturizing anything. There's no such thing as a moisturizer. It's not possible for wax and oil and, and, and emulsifiers to moisturize your skin. Don't you, if you want to be accurate, you want to use the English language accurately, don't ever say the word moisturizer. That's a marketing word. That's a gibberish marketing word invented in some Madison Avenue advertising agency. You cannot moisturize your skin. That doesn't happen. Moisturization, what we think is moisturization, is really softening of the skin. We rub our cream on and the, the fat and the wax sit on the skin surface and you rub your finger along it and you're feeling the reaction between the moisture and the dead skin, between the uh, wax and the dead skin. That's not moisture. That's a softening of that dead skin. Big deal. You soften your dead skin. You go out and spend $100, <coughs> excuse me, $50, $40, $20, $30 from moisturizing. I'm doing air quotes here. Moisturizing lotion. And you get soft, dead skin. That's what it is. And we think we've moisturized, air quotes again. No moisture happening. In fact, it's even worse. Because when you put a moisturizer, air quotes, on your skin... You're shutting down your skin's natural moisture factors. You're suppressing your skin's ability to moisturize itself. And then when your lotion wears off, you're drier than you were before. That's called getting addicted to your moisturizing lotion. And that's why everybody's got dry skin. Because everybody's using these ridiculous moisturizers. Softeners. I don't even, I'm not even going to say the word moisturizer. Although, I, you know, the word is already in the lexicon. It's part of our, part of our languaging. But it's just a fake word. It's a marketing word. It's a nonsense word. It's a baloney word. How do, you, how do you really hydrate your skin? That's what we're talking about when we say moisturizing. We're really talking about trapping water. You build the connective tissue. You stimulate the production of moisture factors. That's how you take care of dry skin. And it isn't going to happen right away. It takes a while to build those moisture factors up and to build, the, um, uh, build up the connective tissue that traps the water. So... How do you do the moisture factors topically? How can you stimulate the production of moisture factors topically? Stimulate them by exfoliation. Why? Because when you exfoliate, you increase turnover time. Those moisture factors are coming out of the cells as they're rising to the top. You exfoliate on a regular basis like you go to the gym on a regular basis. But there's another way that you can actually stimulate the production of moisture factors topically. And it involves a little bit of exfoliation, but it also involves dropping the pH. And that's a super, super powerful anti-aging skin strategy. Dropping the pH of the skin. Temporarily dropping the pH of the skin, making it more acidic. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. We've got lines open for you. We'll take a commercial break and come back on the bright side right after this. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Benny. Four four two three six sixty ten is our number, and we will get your your calls. And we got a bunch of calls today. Eight four four two three six sixty ten in just a moment. So hang on, and uh, yeah, we'll get your calls early today. Just want to read read one story, about read maybe two stories here. In wine, there's health. Low levels of alcohol, good for the brain. This is from Scientific Reports. A couple of glasses of wine can help clear the mind after a busy day. New research shows that it may actually help clear, uh, help clear the mind, as, help, help clean the mind as well. I've always said this. A little bit of alcohol is definitely a, not necessarily bad. I, I'm not going to go as far as say it's good, but it may very, very well be good. There are lots of people who drink just a shot of alcohol every day. My grandfather drank a shot of whiskey every night before he went to bed. And he lived to be in his 90s, healthy, strong guy. 
A lot of people do that. Alcohol stimulates the alcohol uh, stimulates the liver to produce anti-aging compounds. It's part of this hormesis concept that we've been talking about. A little bit of toxicity, a little bit of toxicity is actually a good thing. Homeopathy works this way. A little bit of stress, a little bit of intensity. The adrenal glands will shrivel up if you don't have enough intensity. That's not a good thing. I don't know if that's it. You, you're always going to have a little bit of stress. You're always going to have a little bit of intensity in, the, in your life. But you can leverage intensity. You can leverage stress. That's so important to understand. Entropy is always going to occur in the world. But if we understand how to use it, how to leverage it for our benefit, how to leverage the breakdown, we can build up. The bone is stronger at the point of the break. That should be very reassuring. That should be a very reassuring concept in this crazy world that we live in. The idea that the bone is stronger at the point of the break. Arnold Toynbee's theory of civilizations, stress in civilizations, that civilizations get better. Cultures get better when they're under a little bit of duress, when they're under a little bit of stress. Maybe, maybe our cushy lifestyle compared to our caveman ancestors doesn't work for us. Maybe it works against us, our cushy lifestyle. The fact that we have calories everywhere, for example. One of the all-time great ways to stress the body is starvation controlled starvation. That's like controlled wounding. Controlled starvation makes you stronger. The ketogenic diet, which everybody is all, is the latest fad diet, the ketogenic diet, we've been talking about in this program for years. I've been talking about it for decades since I learned about it in pharmacy school. The ketogenic diet is a stress diet. It's a fasting diet. It's a calorie restriction diet. It's not a high fat diet as much as it's a low calorie diet. It's a fasting diet. It's a way to duplicate fasting. When the body fasts, it builds muscle. When the body fasts, fasts it does not have calories in uh, coming into it, or as many calories coming into it, it mobilizes its resources more effectively. It becomes more resourceful. How cool is that? The body becomes more resourceful. It utilizes energy more efficiently. It turns energy into muscle more efficiently when it doesn't have a caloric input problem with our culture is we got calories everywhere so the body doesn't have to work all right 844 is our number let's go to lori in connecticut good morning lori what's up welcome to the bright side hi ben how are you today i'm doing good how about you i'm oh, pretty good pretty good i have some questions i want to fire at jim it's kind of bothering me i've, I've been yeah. needing to know the answer to this okay um, it starts out with um our, our rheumatoid arthritis and asthma considered chronic degenerative diseases yes absolutely and yeah. chronic degenerative yeah well asthma not as much rheumatoid arthritis that, that's an interesting okay. question actually asthma yeah. is more of an immune it is more of a reaction immune reaction mm -hmm. uh, rheumatoid arthritis starts off as an immune reaction but because mm -hmm. it de because of the gra it causes a gradual degradation of the body over time i would classify it as a chronic degenerative disease Asthma is okay. more like a reaction to something. Okay. The reason I ask that is because I have asthma. Um, my mother has rheumatoid arthritis. And I was going to ask you, does that mean we hit the jumping off point of the triangle of disease? Good for you, Lori. I'm impressed. <laughs> because I'm the chronic impressed. degenerative disease sets in at that point. So I'm wondering if we have these degenerative yes. diseases, have we hit yes. that point? They're both, they're both the triangle of disease. I'll tell you why. Uh, you're not. You're just not at the complete. With uh, asthma, asthma is a, like I say, it's a reaction to something. But the reaction, the, the uh, first two points in the triangle of the disease predispose the body to the reaction. Okay, so it's more if you, in other words, with asthma, if you stopped eating, if you stopped uh, whatever was causing the asthma, you stopped doing it, the asthma would go away. Not necessarily, the rheumatoid, would t rheumatoid arthritis would go away too, but it would take a while because you're, you're, it's more progressed. The rheumatoid arthritis is more progressed than the asthma. The asthma, that can happen instantaneously. The rheumatoid mm -hmm. arthritis it usually takes a while to develop. So the jumping off point, you, rheumatoid arthritis, you clearly have hit the jumping off point in the triangle of disease. Really? In other words, the thyroid is going to be involved, uh, mm -hmm. cortisol is going to be involved, um, and, and certainly blood sugar and digestion are going to be involved. Not, necess mean? not necessarily with asthma. Asthma could just be a reaction to f a food. Okay. Does that mean she has had hypothyroidism? Yes. Is she, is she the one with the rheumatoid? Yeah. Yes. There's hypothyroidism beneath it. Absolutely. Oh, there's wow. always hypothyroidism, whether you've been diagnosed or not. There's always going to be hypothyroidism if you have a progressive disease. There cannot help but be. It's okay. always going to be there. You don't have to have it tested. And it's not going to help you to take thyroid hormone either because uh, the thyroid itself is responsive to uh, estrogen and cortisol. 
and blood sugar and the digestive system. The thyroid itself is subject to the triangle. So you, you cannot, cannot, you can't you, help the th hypothyroidism. You, they give you thyroid hormone because it'll speed you up a little bit. It'll give you a little bit more energy, but it's not helping the condition. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You, you cannot get a chronic degenerative disease without hitting that third point then. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. That's what the that's the the uh, importance, the significance of the triangle of disease. Is it underlies everything? Right. You don't have a chronic degenerative condition unless you have a digestive problem, a blood sugar problem, a stress hormone issue, and a thyroid issue. Stress hormone and thyroid are linked. That's why they're on the third point. It's, if you really want to break it, uh, go down to the foundation of it, it's going to be the digestive system and the blood sugar system. And those, that's really the foundation. That's the base of the triangle. But after the blood sugar and the digestion are messed up, then you get, go into uh, the adrenal thyroid complex. But it's important to recognize that you can't work on the adrenals and the thyroid unless you first work on the blood sugar and, or, well, you can work on it, but you, you, won't have the, a, you won't have the maximum effect unless you work first on the blood sugar and the digestive system. So taking iodine is not going to do anything yeah, for you unless you exactly. Okay. Unless you're right. frankly deficient in iodine, which some people are. Some people are deficient in iodine. And yeah, you'll, you'll replace your iodine stores, but as long as you have a digestive digestive problem, a blood sugar problem, and your hypercortisol, you're str under a lot of stress, taking iodine is not going to cure your thyroid problem. Because it's not really a thyroid problem as much as it is your thyroid compensating and adjusting. Right. Now, there is autoimmune disease of the thyroid. There is a, a Hashimoto's thyroid, and that's the cause of hypothyroidism. But that in itself is a digestive condition. Autoimmune diseases, that are in, autoimmune diseases are digestive conditions. So, you know, I'm, I'm breaking it apart. I'm teasing it apart. But it doesn't serve us to tease it apart like that. It's just interesting to do that. Work on your gut. Work on your blood sugar. Calm the body down. And you'll t address the three points of the triangle of disease. The thyroid will resolve itself. And all chronic diseases will reverse. All of them, and you can test this. I'm not making this as an assertion. I'm not just saying this because I'm, you know, I don't want you to take this as just me saying it as gospel. Do it. Try it. Try it. I defy you to work on the three points in the triangle of disease and not notice results. I it's not possible. And, and way better results than you get from any prescription drug. All right, I got to go, Lori. You got to take a break. Thanks for your call. I hope I helped you out. Have a beautiful day in Connecticut. We'll get to the rest of your phone calls when we come back. 844-236-6010 uh, is our number. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Let's go to Paul in Minnesota. Good morning, Paul. Welcome to the bright side. Yeah, I'm um, 56 years old, and I have these quote-quote age spots on my face. Okay. Is there anything I can do to get rid of Well, them? there's two kinds of age spots. There's two kinds of spots that get called age spots. Actually, it's a better way of saying it. You've got pigment. And yes, you can definitely get rid of pigment. There's lots of ways to do that. And then you've got lipofusion. And you can get rid of that. It's a little trickier. Lipofusion. Have you ever heard of that term? Lipofusion? No. no. All right, so lipofusion is like residue from dead cells. L-I-P-O-F-U-S-I-F-U-S-C-I-N. Lipofusion. Happens inside the body, it happens outside the body, and that's a true age spot. Pigments, the pigmentation, that's not really a true age spot. The lipofusion is the end result of cells that have died and that have not gotten cleared out appropriately. What's supposed to happen when cells die is their uh, residue, what's left over, the ash, if you will, uh, is supposed to get cleared out through the lymph. That doesn't happen as effectively as we get older, so the stuff starts to accumulate. It happens in the brain, it happens in the eyes, it happens in the various organs, and then it happens in the skin. We see it on the skin, but it's happening inside your body too. It's a sign that you're not. You, it's a sign either that you're not clearing out toxicity effectively, or you have too much toxicity. It could be both. Follow me. Now you okay. can tell the way that you can tell the difference between the two is the lipofusion appears deeper. It's and it also has a. It doesn't have a uniform ge uh, 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 shape to it. The shape is kind of like uh, you ever seen like the stuff that looks like a geographical shape, like a map or of a country. It has a weird shape to it. You know what I'm talking about there, Paul? Yep. That's, light, that's lipofusion. It's a little bit lighter in color than pigment. It's a little bit deeper, and it won't come off with depigmentizing agents like hydroquinone or retinoic acid. Now, if you have pigment, 
That you can get definitely get rid of topically. Retinol is the best way. My Truth Retinol 5% gel is a great way to do it. A vitamin C will also do it. Niacin can do it. If you go to a doctor, they'll give you something called hydroquinone, which I don't recommend you use. And then also you can use glycolic acid, salicylic acid. These are acids. Uh, you you want to get somebody to make it for you. The, the stuff you got in the store, the, buy in the stores really isn't very effective. There's lots of ways to get rid of the pigment. The problem with the pigment, or one of the, not a problem, but uh, something you want to keep in mind with the pigment is that pigment itself is a sign of excessive stress hormone. Pigmentation is a sign of excess estrogen and cortisol, which are two major stress hormones. So if that's happening a lot, yes, you can depigmentize yourself topically, but you want to really get your hormone situation, your stress hormone situation under control. Does that follow? You make sense, Paul? So, Did I exp- so what should be my plan of attack? Well, your plan of attack is determine, number one, whether it's lipofusion or pigment. Okay. If it's lipofusion, get yourself on, you start working on your lymphatic system. That's your lipofusion drainage system, your toxin drainage system. Rebounder, vitamin E, lymphatic drainage, more water, uh, lymphatic massage. There's lots of ways to improve uh, lymphatic function, and it's very important that we all do that, actually. Rebounder is a great way to do it. I like That's my favorite way. But also, you can hang upside down on an inversion device, deep breathing. There's lots of ways to move the lymph, hot and cold water plunge. Or, or turning your shower from hot to cold, uh, that can help stimulate the lymph. Uh, there's lots of ways to do that. Vitamin E is a great lymph, uh, a great lipo, anti-lipofusion vitamin, by the way. Uh, probably vitamin C would help you too. High doses of vitamin C and 400 IU of vitamin E a day. And then uh, if it's melanin or pigment, then you want to start using some exfoliating aids. Like I would go with some retinol, get my Truth Retinol 5% gel. Uh, also, uh, our True Serum. Anything with fat-soluble vitamin C will work. The retinol 5% gel is just an amazing anti-hyperpigmentation aid. And then also uh, exfoliation using alpha-hydroxy acids and salicylic acid on a daily basis. That can, you can do really dramatic things that way. First of all, you're going to determine which, one, which pigment it is. All right, Paul, I, I, I got it. Yeah? Do you have one more thing? Not, it's not digestion. Uh, ultimately, if it's lipofusion, it could definitely be a, a digestive problem. If it's pigment, yeah, I guess it could be because of the cortisol link. Uh, but focus on your stress hormone and the way you're going to focus on your stress hormone and your estrogen is by working on your digestion. Yeah, everything is digestion at the bottom line. Everything is always okay. foundationally going to involve the digestive system. It has to. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Have a great day, buddy. All right. Let's go to uh, Dorium in Virginia. Good morning, Dorium. What's up, buddy? Hi. Hey. I am um, my um I have a similar thing to Paul actually. I have lots of pigments all over my You sure skin. it's pigment or lipo did you understand the distinction I made between lipofusion and melanin? The two types of pigment? Um I kind of understood what you said just now, but I, I'm not sure which one I have. Uh huh. You have that. That's important to assess. If you try to do depigmentizing strategies on lipofusion, it's not going to work. So you got to determine which one it is. Um, and really, you're going to have to kind of look. As I say, I'll just say it again. I was telling Paul, the lipofusion will be have an irregular shape to it. The uh, melanin will have a patch. Will just be like a patch of dark spot. But the lipofusion will have weird shapes to it. You've seen, you, you got to have seen those kind of weird things on older folks' hands and uh, arms. Sometimes they'll get it. You get it everywhere, but a lot of times you can see it on the hands. Um, it has a regular shape. Also, it will be deeper, and also it will be lighter in color, more brownish in color than dark. The melanin, the hyperpigmentation, will, be much, will tend to be darker, almost blacker. Less brown, more black. It'll be more on the surface, and it will be more patchy than irregularly shaped. And you got to try those two different stra- two different strategies depending on whether you're dealing with lipofusion or melanin. Does that help, Dorian? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. One melanin. One by the way. Thing. Yeah. Go. Ahead. Let me say one more thing. Hyperpigmentation sometimes occurs after you have inflammation, whether a pimple, a blemish, or a wound of some kind. That's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, and you use the same strategies for that as you do for any hyperpigmentation, retinol, vitamin C, exfoliating aids, uh, and then stabilizing any internal, anything that you have going wrong internally, blood sugar, sta- uh, stabilizing your blood sugar and working on your, your digestive system. Go ahead, Dorian. What else? Okay. And I wanted to find out um, uh, a natural alternative to the 
my insulin that I inject daily. Oh, uh, so many, so many, so many, so many. Change the way you eat, first of all, and you're, you'll be able to reduce your insulin dose almost immediately. Change the way you eat. The doctors don't tell you that. You could, they tell you, you know, they make it sound like you just take your insulin, you can live your life as you ordinarily want to. The problem is insulin is a very pro-aging substance. It revs up the metabolism. And if you're not healthy, that's not a good thing. So you've got to be really careful about, uh, you, you got to be really careful about, uh, when you're on insulin, you got to be really careful about continuing, about how you live your life. Because your goal is on insulin is you want to be able to reduce your insulin dose. And the best way to do that is to change the way you eat. Go ketogenic for one thing. That's what I do. Low calorie for another thing. Uh, and there's wonderful supplements that can help strengthen insulin, potentize insulin. Alpha lipoic acid and chromium and vanadium and thiamine. Of vitamin B1 and vitamin B3, even vitamin B12, all the B complex. Just take the whole B complex. The electrolytes, potassium, magnesium, zinc. It's almost endless the nutrients that help you process sugar and help your insulin work because um, sugar, is, sugar chemistry is so foundational. It's so fundamental. So there's numerous ways that the body, uh, numerous tricks that the body has, numerous, numerous tools that the body uses to help stabilize up. Uh, to help stabilize insulin and, and, and help you, you help you utilize and work with blood sugar more effectively. Dorian, I want to get one more call in, my friend. Thank you okay. for your call. Appreciate it. Let's uh, give Truth Raider the last word. What's up, Truth Raider? How you doing, man? Hey. Good morning, Ben. One more time, we were discussing about copper, what's its benefits, and maybe it's not as good as they uh, promote it to copper be. Copper is a double-edged sword. Copper is a pro-oxidant. It's very active. It's a very active, excitable atom excitable uh, uh, a mineral or atom, I guess is a better way of saying it. Uh, and you got to be careful with it. You always want to balance your copper with zinc. It is extremely important for collagen production. It's also involved in, um, in pigmentation. It has a lot of roles to play. It's very, very important metal or mineral, I should say. Um, but it also is something you got to be careful with. Always take your copper with zinc, maybe two milligrams or two to four milligrams of copper on a daily basis for 50 milligrams of zinc. Personally, I like uh, copper chelate or copper glycinate, and then, of course, I always like zinc picholinate. All right, Truth Raider, thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. Please check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for our true skin health products, including our retinol 5% gel if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, blemishes, or dark spots, or you just want an overall anti-aging treatment, once a week, twice a week treatment, our Truth Retinol 5% gel with all our Truth Treatment products are up at truthtreatments.com. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.